All right, today we're gonna to be looking at a 2008 Prius. Vehicle came in, red triangle of death on the dash. Vehicle will not move. All the warning lights are on. Uh, it's a pretty common failure on these. Um, sometimes the reason this could happen is because of an isolation fault. First thing we did when the vehicle was towed in, we scanned it and we found a bunch of hybrid isolation faults in there. If you see anything in the ABS, uh, you see anything with the, um, the engine control module detecting faults, uh, you might want to do some further testing. But for this one, basically we went in there, I saw these isolation faults, and I went over and I went to the freeze frame data. So something you may not know right off the bat is that uh, if you do end up pulling this code with a typical scanner, it's going to give you that and it's going to give you some freeze frame information. It's going to give you a little bit more information as to where that fault is happening. Um, so the first time we scanned it and I went and pulled the freeze frame data, I was only seeing this, that 526 code. Um, basically, that's a, it's almost a useless um, code or uh, you know logging information. Uh, it tells us that it knows that the high voltage system is leaking voltage, but it doesn't know where it's coming from. So when that happens, you want to go ahead and take the vehicle, test drive it, turn the AC on, um, and if you want to drive it for about 10 minutes, uh, what you're doing is you're basically having the high voltage system run through the AC compressor because this one runs off of the hybrid battery. Uh, it's going to run through the inverter and it's going to go to all the MG1 and MG2 units. Uh, those are the motor generators. It's basically making your car move. Um, whenever it does that, it's going to go ahead and pull up some more freeze frame information if the fault sets again. Um, it did set again. And so what we found is a 612 in addition to the 526. If we saw a 613, Toyota does have on this vehicle a transaxle problem that can cause that problem. It's basically the windings inside of there um they kind of just short together into the uh the pole into it and basically it's gonna it's gonna just fry the wires and it's gonna you know just ruin the whole car you got to replace the transaxle it's a big mess uh but if you see the 612 you can safely assume that that's a hybrid battery related fault um so whenever you get that you want to go ahead and uh, basically make sure that the hybrid battery is keeping all the voltage inside of there and is not leaking out uh, if it is leaking out that's a huge issue uh, you need to basically get the battery replaced or get it serviced as soon as possible. Um, that means that voltage is leaking out of the battery and typically it's going to be leaking into the, the chassis portion of that, into the, the frame of the car, um, which could be potentially pretty dangerous if somebody comes in here touching what they're not supposed to and they could electrocute themselves, uh, which is a huge problem. Um, I wouldn't say that this is going to be something that's super dangerous, like right off the bat, you're going to immediately electrocute yourself if that happens. Um, but it is potentially dangerous and a big reason on why you shouldn't just be testing the system if you don't know what you're doing. Um, I have two Priuses here. One's working, one has a problem. I'm going to show you what a good one looks like and then I'm going to show you what a bad one looks like. And uh, I'm just going to give you a couple of safety precautions and let you know what kind of tools you're going to be needing um, before you start working on this. First thing you want to be wearing your hybrid gloves. Uh, so you're going to be wearing your leather ones on top of your rubber ones. You want to make sure that the date stamp is okay, that they're going to be, you know, within the time that a year is pretty acceptable on them, but you want to leak test them and you want to make sure there are no nicks and tears. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of hybrid service work, so I tend to keep these gloves in pretty good condition. These are actually the shop gloves. Mine are personally, excuse me, had a big lunch today. Um, anyway, um, my gloves are personally fitted for my hands because I have pretty small hands. Um, and uh, yeah, so these are a little big for me, but they still do the job. So uh, you always make, want to make sure you have two sets of these just in case your pair has to be going sent out. If they do have a leak, basically don't work on it. Um, you don't want to risk electrocuting yourself. Um, you can't really make money if you're dead. So uh, yeah, anyway, um, another thing too. Um, so I'm going to be using a test on this scan tool um, with my multimeter that's built into it. However, you wanna make sure that you're using a cat three and above meter that is rated for that kind of voltage. And you're gonna see that on here. So this is just basically my normal multimeter that I use when I'm not using my scan tool. Uh, and this one is also hybrid rated up to 600 volts. So that's a pretty good meter. Um, but typically a cat three and above is gonna be perfectly fine for you to go ahead and be testing on that. Um, if you don't have a meter that's uh, rated for that, you're probably just gonna damage your meter if you do end up finding uh, electricity in there when, uh, and that's not a really good deal. So uh, another thing too, you wanna make sure that your leads are also cat three rated. 
Uh, and basically what you're looking for is the insulation on there is not going to be contacting anything else. These are Cat 2 rated. They're not Cat 3 rated. Uh, but for the demonstration, this is perfectly fine because uh, I'm just kind of showing you what you're doing. But if you're going into the inverter, opening up the cover and testing things in there, I would never use those leads. That's um, You're going to damage your equipment or worse, you can damage the electronics in there and that's not a good thing at all. Um, all right. So one of the things you're going to want to do is uh, disconnect the hybrid service plug. Um, I've already tested this vehicle, so I know it's safe. Um, I did all this stuff with my gloves before. Um, but now that I've already tested this one, I'm just going to show you with my uh, normal hands. Um, but in a normal situation, you want to go ahead and wear these. And I'll kind of show you in a second on why you're going to be wanting to do that. <laughs> if you've never disconnected this, uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, basically, you pull up on it. You're going to push forward. It can be a little eh, tough. And then you're going to pull it out. And that's your hybrid service plug. Um, So, uh, the way you're going to do this isolation testing is basically you're going to connect to the bottom lead on here, and then you're going to connect to the battery um, actual chassis on it, um, the actual casing that's on there. Uh, the way to take this thing off is basically you're going to get this little tab, but typically you can just kind of wiggle it and pull it off, and it's going to be right there. Uh, this is rated for 125 amps or 450 volts, which is uh, pretty high, and it could kill you. So. Um, you know, when you're going in here, after you take that special protective cover off of it, you want to be very, very careful about going in there. You don't want to touch these two leads. You're basically connecting yourself right to the battery and uh, you'll die. There, I mean, there's not really, it's DC voltage, so it's going to it's gonna make you extra crispy. Um, Colonel Sanders might want to, you know, figure out how that's done. Anyway, um, so what you want to do is you're going to connect basically one lead to the bottom on here and then you're going to connect the other lead onto the actual chassis of the battery. Again, I don't recommend that you're doing this if you don't know what any of these ratings are or what the gloves are for or anything like that. I don't recommend you going in here and just testing this stuff. Uh, it can be very dangerous. At least make sure that you have the safety equipment if you do want to go ahead and go in here and mess with that. Um, so, like I said, I've already tested this battery, so I know it's okay that I can go ahead and touch this stuff. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and show you. So when you're putting this plug back in with the safety cover off, you just basically slide it in there. Again, these can be a little goofy. Okay, you're gonna push up on it and do not press the cover back down. Once you've pressed the cover back down, it's connecting the high voltage battery back onto the car and you're running electricity through it. And that's the point where it's extremely dangerous if you touch it. So don't do that. Don't push it down. Leave it in the upward position until you put that protective cover back onto there. You're gonna get your lead. You're gonna put it onto the bottom connection of that. turn on my meter, I'm going to go to volts, and then I'm going to connect that over to the chassis of the battery. As you can see here, we've basically got zero volts, um, so that's a battery that's okay. We don't have the battery leaking voltage um, into the vehicle, and that's a battery that I'd be okay with. Um, after that, we're going to go over here and we're going to test this other battery and show you um, how that's going to be a problem. Do not leave that protective cover off of there. That would be the worst thing ever for somebody to be trying to take the proper safety precautions, removing the plug, and then they go and electrocute themselves and die because you decided to be lazy and didn't put that back on. So please put that stuff back. And again, uh, whenever you're going into the car, this has to be in the downward position. You push it in, you push that up, and do not press it back down. If you press it back down, that connects to the battery, up, it's unlocked. And the vehicle will know whether you had it locked or in the unlocked position. And uh, so basically, if you leave it in the unlocked position, the vehicle also will have similar problems where it's just basically not connecting the battery to the car. Um, and it has a little sensor on here 
that can basically just let the car know that the battery is not plugged in. And this can happen sometimes when people service the battery or disconnect it because they're doing work up there and then they do not press this lock back down, the car can actually throw some codes and have some problems and all you had to do was press that back in. So uh, make sure that the key is off too. I don't think that I would have to say that, but uh, yeah, you don't want the system randomly doing things. So make sure that the car is completely shut off. Uh, the vehicle doesn't have to be locked, but um, if you want to be extra safe, you can also disconnect the battery, but you don't need to do that. Um, basically just make sure that the system is completely off and then you're um, able to take that back out. Um, okay, so here we go. On to this one. On this battery, we have a different situation. <laughs> this battery is leaking into the car. Um, so I went on here on my scope because it's a little bit easier to see. And so I have it set to 400 volts. Uh, this meter is actually only rated for about 90 volts. So uh, 400 volts, um, if it's actually running any current through there, it can fry your meter. So if your meter is not rated for that, don't be going in here unless you know that your meter can handle it. I know what voltage is in there, so I know it's okay for me to plug this into. Um, basically, I'm going to go ahead and set it for, let's do, yeah, let's do a second. That's fine. Um, and this one, I have it connected in the same position. Connecting it to the battery. And right there, I'm leaking 52.8 volts. That means that this connection over here to the case on the battery is leaking 52 volts, which means if I were to touch that and touch over here onto the car, I'm gonna kill myself. Um, so I don't know if you know, if you're working on hybrids, you wanna do a one-handed method. You wanna make sure that you have um, a mat outside so you're not you know contacting the ground but most of the time the tires are good insulation to make sure that's not going to happen however what you don't want to be doing is going over here and working and then you've got your other hand and you touch on here because now you've just shocked yourself and uh it's not going to be a fun day for you uh and dc voltage it's not something where you kind of get shocked and you're out it's gonna pretty much it's gonna try to kill you uh, it's gonna run it through your heart especially if you touch one hand over to the other hand it's going to go straight through complete a circuit it's going to run through your heart and it's going to stop your heart um, and uh, you can do cpr to try to save somebody but uh, it's probably not going to work uh, the most common thing that'll happen is you're just going to bust one of your eyeballs uh, it'll just pop so uh, again don't be doing this stuff unless you kind of know what you're doing or at the very minimum you know the risks and you kind of know what you got going on here but again, this is a case where, you know, we're leaking voltage and uh, this would be a case where we want this battery to go ahead and be serviced as soon as possible. Um, if that ever does happen, you want to go ahead and mark the key, lock it away. I actually just take the service plug and disconnect it and then I lock it with the key inside of my toolbox. I don't want somebody coming out here trying to mess with it. I park it in a spot where it's convenient, where nobody's going to, you know, it's not in the way or anything like that because I don't want the other techs going out here who don't know what they're doing. Um, you know, they're just lube techs are just here to move the cars, but I don't want them going in back here and messing around in the trunk and then accidentally shocking themselves. Uh, that, that's, uh, you know, we, uh, we got a lot of things to do. It'd be extremely inconvenient if somebody, you know, had to go to the hospital and, uh, it's going to put us severely behind. Uh, anyway, if you do end up having that problem where you have a hybrid isolation fault, typically what the car is going to do is it's not going to... We have a train conductor who's a little happy with his horn. I think he's done. Okay, anyway, if you do have that hybrid isolation fault and your vehicle is not able to move, one of the things that you can do in a quick pinch is to go ahead and just disconnect the battery on both ends. And then you would just want to go ahead and contact these two together and just leave it like that for a minute. Um, how long you need to do this? Uh, to be completely honest, I think a couple seconds is probably fine. Uh, but if you really want to be safe on that, um, leaving it connected for, you know, about a minute or so, or even five minutes, it's going to completely clear the car's memory. 
um, after you've cleared the codes and you will be able to move the car, but you're only gonna be able to move it one time. As soon as the vehicle recognizes that the hybrid system is leaking voltage, it's going to automatically disable you from starting it again, and it may stop the vehicle completely and not let you go anywhere. So a lot of the newer vehicles, they're a lot more strict than this one. This is a you know a second generation Prius, so it's not too advanced, um, but it does have enough safety features on it that it's basically not gonna let you drive the car because you could, um, burn up one of the cells you could cause a fire uh it is leaking electricity so it is potentially dangerous and uh those are some things that um reasons why the vehicle is turning that light on and why it's disabling the vehicle um, once you do that you're just going to go ahead and reconnect the battery and then once you start it it's going to let you start it one time and then don't turn the car off unless you want to repeat this procedure again um, after you repeat that, you'll be able to basically start it, move it over to a spot. I don't recommend driving it for an extended period of time. Uh, the only reason I test drove this vehicle was basically just to check and see where the isolation fault was happening. Uh, if I weren't getting any other fault codes other than that 526 subcode in there, uh, in the freeze frame data, um, I would basically uh, just have to start testing everything. I had to take the cover off of the inverter and start doing isolation testing up there. Uh, it can be really, really time consuming. Uh, and that's something that where we'd have to charge the customer a lot of additional time. Um, and I charge, you know, one and a half times uh, labor rate on that stuff because uh, hybrid stuff is just very dangerous and it, it's a lot more time consuming than typical testing. I'm very careful about it and very slow about it um, because I'm, you know, I got, <laughs> I got my life to worry about. Uh, your car is not as important to me as uh, getting home at the end of the day. So I'm going to take my time with it. I'm going to be careful. And uh, that cost is kind of added on to uh, the customer because I'm not going to risk it. And I don't think that the customer really wants that either. Um, that's basically how you're going to be doing these isolation testing. Um, but this is only for the high voltage battery. And um, what you would really want to be doing is using an isolation tester, which is a specialized piece of equipment um, that's going to send voltage into the battery cable um sorry not the battery cable the high voltage cables and it's basically like kind of pressure testing a pipe um you're going to be putting voltage in there and you're going to see if any leaks out if you get lower than what you put into it uh that means that it's leaking somewhere and um that's typically where your problem is going to be um but for this one for a battery you can usually just typically use a multimeter and you're just going to be checking for voltage but um that's a very quick and easy test that you can do Again, I just want to make sure that everybody is aware this is very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing and you need to be very careful when you're working on these systems so that you don't accidentally injure yourself or even kill yourself. Another thing I have to note on this is that this vehicle actually is moving perfectly fine right now. Even though it still has the battery leaking, um, it is actually, it was not driving earlier, but after I had done the reset procedures, the vehicle started driving normally. I don't expect that to last for long. Uh, they actually had this battery rebuilt and placed into here. And um, it happened two weeks after that, um, after that event, after the battery was serviced. So uh, in this case, the, the vehicle is moving around normally. It's not setting any codes, um, even though there is definitely an isolation problem here. And um, the vehicle should have noted it. Uh, I was actually expecting, and I was gonna show you what exactly the vehicle does. But right now it seems to be driving normally. Um, but it still definitely does have a problem. So we're just parking it and making sure that it's not moved anywhere until this, uh, this issue is taken care of. Um, but that is a weird thing. Uh, these problems can be a little bit intermittent. Um, the cables can fray, rodents could get to them. Uh, whenever you're testing this stuff too, you wanna make sure that you don't have any oil on any of the stuff on your hands. You wanna make sure you're dry, clean. Like I said, you wanna be wearing your protective equipment uh, because anything that's gonna conduct electricity through there um, that's going to try to send electricity wherever it can, um, you know, quickest past the ground. And typically that's going to be you. Um, so yeah, just be careful out there guys.